Hello everyone, I'm with me, and today we're going to be talking about a little concept I call the whole. We all have our own ways of processing information. Some of us like our views being challenged, while some of us may not. Some people will see challenging views in anger and defensiveness, while others might see challenging views in positivity and openness. Hopefully, when you see a view that challenges your core beliefs, you don't look at that view in complete disgust, but consider the possibility of it being true. After analyzing that challenging view, we can determine if it's worth putting in our pool of knowledge or not. One of the scariest places to put yourself in is what I call the whole. The whole is a philosophical concept where intelligence comes to die. Now, you don't have to be religious to be in the whole. I've seen religious debates in comment sections, and I can tell you that there are atheists and religious people who are in this whole. So what exactly is the whole? Well, the whole is a core belief that somebody has become so attached to in their life, anything challenging it will be ignored. It's basically like digging a massive hole and never leaving it. Even when people give you opportunities to leave this hole with ladders and ropes, you ignore those opportunities and just dig deeper. The whole is the belief that has become your core identity, and the ladders and ropes are the views that challenge your core identity. The whole is something I've been scared of for the longest time. I want to be as open-minded as possible and consider the fact that I may be wrong about a multitude of things. Doing research has allowed me to form better opinions and has helped me add to my pool of knowledge. Sometimes I feel like I'm too eager to add my pool of knowledge, while other times I feel like I'm too strict. This is where the whole comes in. Analyzing what other people say and taking those things into consideration has allowed me to become rather critical of things that don't fit into my own pool of knowledge. Every time I think about others' religious beliefs and philosophies, I'm always scared that I've dug the hole and I'm just ignoring the ladders and ropes that allow me to get out of it. There are many reasons why this fear has been scratching me. For one, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to tell other people how they should be open-minded while being closed-minded myself. I also don't want to be wrong. Of course, there is no right or wrong opinion, they're just opinions at the end of the day. But at the same time, I'm always scared that I just didn't do enough research on a subject, or perhaps I only listen to one side too much and not the other. A third reason why I have this fear is because of Steven Anderson. In case you don't know who Steven Anderson is, here are a few clips to give you an idea of his character. The world tells us that homos desire to be monogamous. It's just a dude that wants to be married to another dude. I don't give a rip whether they get married or not. Stone them with stones. Sorry, freaks, I gotta go. Get it and die. It's disgusting and filthy, and you're the ones that have the guts to say it. And what the Bible actually says, and by the way, turn to Leviticus 2013 because I actually discovered the cure for AIDS, okay? Now, this is the cure for AIDS, okay? And, you know, everybody's talking about let's have an AIDS-free world by 2020 or let's have an AIDS-free... Look, we could have an AIDS-free world by Christmas. <laughs> You know, or at least, okay, it wouldn't be totally AIDS-free, but we'd be like 90-some percent AIDS-free by Christmas if we would follow this. Okay, here's what the Bible says, Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with the woman, okay, it says, even both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And that, my friend, is the cure for AIDS. It was right there in the Bible all along. And they're out spending billions of dollars in research and testing. It was, it's curable right there. Because if you executed the homos like God recommends, you wouldn't have all this AIDS running rampant. If I had a button right here on the pulpit, I'd just push this button and every would fall over dead. I'll push it until it breaks. I will push it until I break my finger. In case you're unaware of my opinion on Steven, I believe he's dug himself the hole. The hole being that the LGBTQ plus community are evil sinners worthy of death. This should come as no surprise to anyone that I 100% disagree with this man's beliefs. For one, I'm bisexual, and for two, I don't believe anyone is worthy of death. Clearly, I'm against Steven Anderson's beliefs, so why am I so scared of being in this hole? The main reason is that I don't want to end up like Steven Anderson. This man is the exact opposite of the person that I strive to be. I've never seen so much hatred toward a group of people before. Hell, I've never seen that much hatred to begin with. I'm going to be honest when I say this, he fucking scares me. I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. It's clear to me that Stephen is in the hole. Even if the actual Jesus came down and said that he supported the LGBTQ plus community, I bet money Stephen Anderson would believe that Jesus was not actually Jesus, but actually the devil trying to trick humanity into supporting the LGBTQ plus community. 
I'm scared of this guy. Not just because of his violent attitude, but also because I'm scared I'm going to catch some radicalism off him. Don't get me wrong, homophobes have definitely dug their own hole. Some have it so deep, even if their own children came out as gay or bi, they would send them away to gay camps or straight up kick them out. But Steven Anderson scares me a little more than your average homophobe. It's not just the fact that Steven Anderson is a violent homophobe, but the fact that he has a following of violent homophobes as well. People bring their fucking children to this guy's preachings. You can bring your child to any church you want, it is your choice, but when the guy on the podium starts talking about a button that kills innocent people, I don't want children anywhere near that church. This is where my fear of the hole kicks in. Am I going too far in saying that children shouldn't be near this church? Have I dug my own hole? These are the questions that have been eating me. I know that I'm in the right by saying what Steven Anderson is advocating for is absolutely horrendous and wrong on almost every possible level, so why am I so scared of the fact that I dug my own hole? With enough thinking and time, I think I finally found the answer. Because of how radical Steven Anderson is, it's bringing out the radical in me. It's kind of like being yelled at. If someone is unjustly yelling at you, you want to yell at them back because that's just the reaction they're giving you. Monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. Because of Steven Anderson's radicalism, it's making me want to become radical myself. Mind you, I don't want any of these people dead. I've said it before, no one deserves to die. I can't believe I live in a society where I have to even fucking say that. I, however, don't want Steven Anderson to have a voice. I don't like the fact that he has a pedestal and can say all these nasty things to his followers. It upsets me. It makes me feel gross. It makes me want to go over to that church and cut the mic. I'm not going to do that, obviously. I don't even want to go near that church or the state that church is located in anyways. Luckily for me, I have more self-control than Steven Anderson does. His bigotry didn't make me angry even when Steven himself got angry. It just made me sad. It's hard to believe that someone wants other people killed just because they're gay or bi. It's such an insignificant factor in an individual's personality. It's hard to imagine hating someone for something as small as that. I know there's nothing I can do to change Steven Anderson's mind. His hole is too deep. Holy Kool-Aid did a peaceful protest at the church and Steven Anderson called them all freaks. Some of those protesters were Christian. He's so radical, it'd take an Armageddon happening in order for him to change his mind. And that upsets me. During the protest, people read out the names of those who died at the nightclub shooting in Orlando. One of those people was 19 years old. Jason! Benjamin! Just but 19 years old! A teenager! I got a little teary-eyed at that. Not just because they were so young, but the fact that I'm 18 years old. One fucking year away. Do they care? No. In, in fact, they were saddened that more of them didn't die. You know, I think Orlando, Florida is a little safer tonight. Now that 50, you know, the tragedy is that more of them didn't die. I mean, the tragedy is I, I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm kind of upset that he didn't finish the job. This is the kind of radicalism I hope to never become. I'd rather go to church and pray every Sunday than to hope and wish for the death of my fellow human beings. I'd rather die right now than become that <laughs> radical. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did. You want to support me on Patreon? Link in the description. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Buh bye bye